How's it going? How was the screening? I think it's fine. You will hear now the the auditory what they think about the film, and they might have a question to you as well. But I will I'll start with the first question. Okay. <laughs> so the uh, so we saw the film, and um, it was quite um, difficult to process, I can imagine. And uh, I have a question: How long did it last the shooting process, and uh, what was the main challenge for you while making this film? Um, so I, I went out in. In February 2012, for the first time, and um, and then spent two years making it. I spent a year living on the ground with the Rangers. Um, in in terms of the biggest challenge, I, I mean, it, it's hard to know where to begin. Every, every part of making Virunga was was really difficult. Um, uh, it was it was terrifying. Uh, just you know, being in those combat situations was very scary. But then, of course. Doing the investigation into a billion-dollar oil company um, was was full of all sorts of challenges, and the risks the risks the people in the film took were exceptional. Melanie was Greek, and a number of other very great people who are in the film risked their lives on a on a very regular basis trying to gather the evidence. And there were some very dangerous and powerful people who never wanted this film to see the light of day. Right. And how how did you came up? Idea to make a film about Congo and about the, this issue. What was the reason? Um, well, okay, so the initial film was actually very different. It was it was meant to be. Um, I, I I was working. I, I work a lot in, in, in African countries, and I've been trying for a while to tell positive stories from from the region because you don't tend to hear those sorts of stories from from Africa. Um, and I came across a story about this place called the Virunga National Park and these rangers trying to rebuild the country after 20 years of war and I found that story really positive yeah. and it was all about you know, these rangers trying to do development projects to help people and create stability and peace um, and that's the story I, I set out to go and tell and I'd only been on the ground a few days when um, the rangers said well you know the big story really isn't, isn't us, it's about this oil company from, from your country, because I'm a Brit. Yeah. And, um, and then within a few weeks, a war started. So the story took this, this big U turn very quickly. It became something quite different. Yes. And uh, what is the reaction from Soko and from the people from the park? What is the impact of the film in general? Okay, well, that, okay, so that's a, that's a big question. Um, in, in terms of, of, of Soko, well, they were, you know, they've clearly been very upset by this film. Um, I can tell you that when, just before we launched the film, we got in touch with them to tell, to tell them what we'd been doing. You know, we did go to them during the filmmaking because anyone who's ever publicly in Eastern Congo said, I'm in, you know, I'm in opposition to the oil, has received death threats or, yeah. you know, or, 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 or even, you know, been beaten up or what, what have you. So, so we had to keep everything very quiet. And a few weeks before the film was to launch, we wrote to Soko and we said, look, this is, we've made this investigation into, into the actions of your company, me and your contractors and supporters, um, and here are the allegations. And they wrote, wrote us back a very long letter, which basically said, if you screen this film, we're probably going to sue you. Then they wrote to the film festivals that we were going to screen the film at and said, if you screen this film, we're probably going to sue you. Yeah. And, then, and then they wrote to the journalists who started to review the film when we released it and said, if you don't take down your reviews of this film, we're probably going to sue you. Um, so that was the very beginning. I and mean, they've just been very aggressive with us. Um, and, um, and, you know, publicly, you've read at the end of the film what they say, they deny everything. Which... Uh, which you as an audience member can make up your own minds about what, what you believe is, uh, is the truth. Um, in terms of the impact, I mean, uh, our, our initial, really for us, this was always about trying to shine a, a spotlight on what's happening in this park. And, um, and it seems crazy, but in the last year since we released this film, I suppose it's, it, it's, the film has done a lot better than we ever possibly dreamed, yeah. um, and two weeks ago it was at the Oscars, which, I mean, you know, it's obviously yeah. great to be there as a filmmaker, but, but um, really the, sh the light that that shone on the park, on the issues at the heart of this film, was, was enormous, and there's a real groundswell of support for Virunga 
Um, and you know, we're, we're, we're hopeful that SoCo will eventually do the right thing. Yeah, congratulations with that. I think it's very important. And it's very important film for us as well because we were also trying to protect some kind of uh, um, uh, environmental things here in Germany, which is quite difficult. And uh, it encourages us in a way to see the films like that. So thank you for that. And I will ask uh, people if, they, if you have some questions. Then. Yes? What was the... <coughs> What is the reaction from the Congolese government? Uh, from the Congo government? Yeah, the Congolese government. So there, there is a question of the reaction from the Congo government uh, for the film. Okay, well, okay, so, so, so this, the, the film hasn't gone out nationally in Congo. It goes out nationally in, uh, shortly, in a couple of weeks. We, when we first released this film, we initially we were going to simultaneously release the film in Congo and worldwide. and. Two days before this film was released, Emmanuel de Moreau, the warden of the park, was ambushed and, and almost killed by an unknown gunman. And at that point, our partners on the ground in Eastern Congo, um, we worked with a lot of uh, local civil society groups, they told us, definitely don't screen the film now in Congo, it's too dangerous. So we've been waiting for a long time until everyone gives us the green light to do it, which Thankfully, everyone feels it's the right environment now to do it. Um, but that means instead, the Congress obviously knows about this film, and and the response is mixed. The, the park of the park rangers, they're government officers, so they're very anti what Soko is doing. That that represents the voice of the government. But at the same time, there's clearly people in Congo who who do support what Soko is doing in the, in the government, and they couldn't have got this far without that support. So it's 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 mixed. happening in this part because because I, I I like to consider myself someone who knows about certain issues in Africa. I'd never even heard of the Virunga National Park before before I first went there. And this oil company had been had been active there for a number of years and I had never heard about it. So first and foremost we wanted to make as loud a noise as possible about this issue. And we still do. I mean it's it's we still want people who have seen it and connect with the issues to share this to share this film, share, you know, spread it on Facebook, spread it, tweet about it. The film's available to watch on Netflix. I don't know if you can watch Netflix in Georgia, but but um, but it's it's available on Netflix. You, you can go online and you can find websites which allow you to watch it on, on Netflix anyway. So so first and foremost is to spread the word. Um, secondly, it's if you want to, you can donate to the park directly. It's through the park's own website and they need every bit of support they can. Um, and lastly, um, this is probably less relevant for people in Georgia, but we always ask people to check their investments because they might not be directly invested in SOCO International, but there's a lot of very big global companies who are investors in SOCO. And we ask if you are invested in a company like the Royal Bank of Scotland or Bank of New York or you know massive companies, is to write to them and um, and and say, you know, what, what are you doing to put pressure on SoCo International to permanently withdraw from the Virunga National Park and never return? Thank you. Uh, I have a question. Uh, what is the reaction from the Congolese government? Yes, it was for it was for it was for was for it 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 was for is for, it was special in your scenario or there was information that was screened and cannot use if you can, if you uh, would not use this uh, screen camera you cannot make uh, you cannot know some information for these people i mean that it was special this one in film or it was difficulties that you have during your shooting for the film 
Uh, you mean undercover shooting? Uh, yeah. Yes, I know. Rama is I saw that this has a film secret that I saw a little camera romance was shaking. It was special, but they say no one is not sure to it or problem. But I was lost. I'm not going to informate him about him. So the question is about undercover shooting. Was it uh, deliberately done or was it? How, how was it the undercover shooting process and uh, how the, came, the idea came up? I'm not a I'm not a follow, I'm not a follow. I'm not a follow, 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 i went to the park, I, I, like I said, I had a completely different idea of what this film would be. And um, when I learned about the park's very serious concerns about Cycle International, that the park, the park had already been doing investigation into Cycle, their own investigation, and so had local fishermen and local civil society groups. And they were doing this investigation on their own, very isolated, and they weren't, you know, they, they weren't professional investigators. I, the small contribution that I could make is uh, I've been making journalistic investigative films for a while and I know a lot about using undercover film and cameras so I realised that what I could do is provide some tools, some technology to allow people to document what was happening much better. They could use that, you know, those cameras to document things and have concrete evidence rather than, rather than just you know, sort of notes and, and their words. Um, was it was it difficult? It, it was a nightmare. I mean, it was you know it's very scary to wear those those cameras because if you're caught with them, you know the consequences can be very bad. Um, they don't work. It's in a James Bond movie, you know, an undercover camera is, is, a, is a contact lens and it's also a bomb. But in real life, they're they're quite big. They break a lot and uh, and and they're really difficult to use. Um, so it, it was it was really tough. Uh, and the question was about the sponsoring the film. So, what was the budget of the film, and how did you fundraise? Um, well, really, really difficultly. Uh, I, you know, when we first tried to raise money for this, it's it's very hard. Firstly, because it's a film in Africa. It's it's a film. It's a film without an ending. I mean, when we were going up to people at the beginning, and we were saying, "Look, we don't quite know where this story is going to go." I'm an unheard of filmmaker, no one wanted to fund us to begin with. Um, so we spent the first year with, with no money, it was, it was me on the ground on my own, with um, uh, a, a Canon 7D, if you know what that is, it's a tiny little camera. Um, and it was about a year, a year in that we managed to, um, to, to start raising some money, we brought a fantastic producer on board. Um, and uh, we, we raised money from foundations. So foundations who tend to support issues about human rights or environmental yeah. issues. Um, and the budget was a couple of hundred thousand dollars in the end. Yeah. Okay. So there are some questions? Yes. Uh, what about other uh, threats to the park, like uh, illegal uh, forestry activities, uh, population explosion? Are those uh, significant? I, I, did, I didn't hear that. Questions about other threats for the park? Yeah, besides uh, uh, war and, and the soil company, what about uh, illegal uh, forestry activities? Um, are those uh, affecting uh, the, the park, uh, park's welfare? So, so, um, so the, the park, as, as you can see in the film, the park faces a lot of different threats. Um, so in the film you see war, um, there's poaching, there's, there's deforestation, but I think the thing is, with all of those different threats, the rangers have been able to manage them. The poaching levels, certainly of gorillas, are going down. Deforestation is going down. But the, the, the oil threat is a threat which, which threatens the entire integrity of the park. And, and what I should say is, Virunga really represents one of the best chances this Eastern Congo has to drive forward economic development through tourism, through hydropower, and it's through economic development that you can have long-lasting stability by creating jobs for hundreds of thousands of people. And with that comes long-lasting peace. And the oil, the oil issue threatens 
not just the wildlife, it threatens all the people because if the park's destroyed, the best chance of creating prosperity goes with, with that. So the, the oil is, is really it's, it's really a human issue as well as an environmental issue. Any other questions? Yes. What is the argument from the Ministry of Environment? It was saying that they allow SOCA, but what was the argument that they allow? Did you hear the question? What was the yeah. argument for the Ministry of Environment? Uh, they said they allow SOCA to work, and what was the argument? Well, I mean, so, so just, just to explain, it, it's, it's obviously quite complicated, but um, basically the government, what the government did is they divided up the east of the country into numerous different oil concessions. In the same way that the government in my country does, and somewhere in the US, I'm sure you have something similar in Georgia as well. Um, now, one of those oil concessions, half of it covered the, the Virumi National Park and half of it didn't. And what would be very legal is SOCO to explore for oil in the part of the concession which was outside of the park. But this oil company only explored for oil in the part of the concession that was inside the park. And that, that's what was illegal. That's, that's what the serious problem amounts to. Um, you know, there's, there's been a succession of, of environmental ministers. Some have been dead against what they've been doing. You know, one or two have been slightly more in favour, you know, much slightly more supportive. It's you know different people in all governments have different opinions. I have also one question. Are you working on something new now? <laughs> um, no, you know um, this has been my life for the last three years, um, and uh, uh, and I have. I mean, uh, it, the, it felt like the only right thing to do is is to work with this film because I. I, like everyone else on this team, enormously care about this park and we wanted to use the film we created to try and do the best we could to protect it and that's been a full-time job. Um, so, I, I'm not working on anything new now. I, I, I'm starting to think about what might be next, but I, I'm still, virtually most of the hours of my day are taken up with room bits and pieces. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time and uh, thank you for this wonderful film and uh, good luck with everything. I can have only uh, 10 computer so I can see who's in the audience. Sorry, but I was very much to do that. <laughs> okay.